Hi, I'm David Pope from Clinical Edge, and welcome to this five minute physio tip. Today, we're gonna to be talking about discogenic rye necks and how you can differentiate, identify, and treat it. In our last video, we talked about acute rye necks, and they have a very different pattern, presentation, and response to treatment to your more discogenic rye neck. So if you haven't watched the acute rye necks, you can go and watch that one after this one. Today, we're gonna to focus on the discogenic rye neck, so I hope you enjoy its presentation. So now we're going to talk again about rye necks and the features of a rye neck are that there's neck pain and restriction of movement, both of these, and they've got unilateral or asymmetrical symptoms. So the different types of rye neck, and you'll remember this from our first video on acute rye neck. So we've got acute rye neck, disky rye neck, that's what we're going to focus on in this one presentation. We've got atlantoaxial subluxation, spasmodic torticollis, and hysterical rye neck. So what are the features of discogenic rye neck? So we're looking at someone that's got discogenic neck pain, often with nerve root type symptoms. They've got an irritation or compression of the nerve or the disc. The age is where what'll, one of the features that'll help you to differentiate from your acute rye neck. So this occurs in your older population, so your 35 to 60 year olds. In a discogenic rye neck, they often have stiffness or limitation of movement prior to the onset and it's a less of a sudden onset of pain than your acute rye neck that happens really suddenly. So what sort of symptoms will someone with discogenic rye neck have? So they've often got local neck pain, plus or minus shoulder pain, and they often can't find a comfortable position. They're able to perform some contralateral rotation and lateral flexion, so that's away from their pain, and it often involves that mid to low cervical spine and they're usually able to reach midline. So some fairly different features to your acute rye neck. What about treatment? Well, without treatment, and sometimes even with, it can progress to nerve root irritation or compression, so it has the potential to get worse. Also with your prognosis, it's gonna respond slower to your treatment than your acute rye neck. Remember in your acute rye neck, you're looking for that immediate change, they're gonna get up and, and you know, report much more improved range of movement and at least no sudden sharp pain. In your discogenic rye, rye neck, you're looking at a treatment that's gonna take a lot more and more regular treatment. You can use your rotation, your lateral flexion movements or pivots once again in your pain-free direction, but you may also include in your discogenic rye neck more of your other manual therapy like PAVMs or PIVMs. Manipulation wouldn't be the first line of choice for this, as really it's not a good idea to include manipulation in your first line of choice for anything. It's more of a progression of treatment, but you can include your other types of manual therapy like your PAVMs or PIVMs. So I hope that helped you to understand discogenic rye neck and also to help you differentiate it between an acute rye neck and your discogenic rye necks. So I hope you enjoyed that video on discogenic rye necks and you've got lots of good ideas about how to identify patients that come in with a discogenic rye neck and how you can go about treating it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to catching you on the next five minute physio tip.